Hi, Scorpio. This is your astrology report for March and April of 2024. Let's get started by taking a look at this chart for March 10th. This is the day of the Pisces new moon, and for you, this is occurring in your fifth house. The fifth house rules a few different things. It's sort of an interesting house. It's about children, if you have children, and also creativity. And the fifth house also rules your romantic life, like dating for fun, or it also corresponds with the physical side of your relationships. And Scorpio, you've really had a lot going on in this area of your life for the last year or so. With Saturn here, you've been doing a lot of hard work. There's been like a maturing process that's been going on. You've been sort of acting from a more mature, grown-up place in this area of your life in some way. You may be applying a very diligent, persistent, step-at-a-time type of approach. I'm getting this again because Saturn's been here for the last year. And Neptune is here as well, which gives this sort of a dreamy quality. You have big goals and you're doing the work to get there. Again, this might relate to your children, your creativity, your romantic life, or it could be some combination of all of these themes. And right now, around the time of this new moon, it's like you get a little bit of a reset energy for all of that. You're getting some fresh insights, perhaps a little bit of a more empathetic approach. There may be some ways in which your intuition is helping you to better understand the situation. Your compassion and your empathy. You're able to see it from someone else's side in a new way. And that's part of what's ushering in this new era. I'd also like to add that this is a great time to just get a little extra rest. Pisces new moon is a great time to like take a bath and go to bed early. We just need to heal and care for ourselves. You really have been doing a lot of hard work in this area. And a new moon is a very quiet internal energy. And then when it's in Pisces, it kind of has that escape soothe your emotions type quality to it. So maybe enjoy a little extra me time right now. Be sure to give yourself credit for everything that you've been working so hard at for the last year or so. And that should allow for some of this intuition to come in where these areas of life are concerned as well. Next, Scorpio, right on the heels of this new moon, the very next day, Venus moves into Pisces. And this is a really neat transit that I want to discuss with you. Venus will actually be here until until April 4th. And again, that's here in your fifth house, same, same life areas, creativity, children, romantic life, the same stuff we were just discussing for the new moon. But Venus moving in here right after all that new intention setting, it's so great. First of all, Venus and Pisces is excellent for relationships. So whatever relationships to other people are involved in this story for you, they get some healing during this time and they just run a little bit smoother. And I'm guessing that's because of this movement that you've made toward greater empathy in some way. You're finding some real joy and peace and harmony in this aspect, in this area, these areas of your life right now. That's a wonderful thing. So your creativity, for example, might really, really be on fire during, you know, the majority of the month of March here after this transit until April 4th. Venus and Pisces is very creative. Anything involving beauty, music, all of that is very well, very well supported by this. There's also something quite romantic about it. So if you have a romantic relationship in your life that means a lot to you, you guys could have some really great times connecting around these periods. The relationship could even take on like a mystical quality during this period. Of course, if you have children, this is also excellent for those relationships. Those connections might be flowing more smoothly than usual. And you also might be finding that these people, these aspects of your life are a little bit more magnetic to you right now than usual. You're more drawn to them. You want to spend time with this romantic partner. You're really enjoying your children and wanting to be around them as much as possible. You're wanting to throw yourself into your creativity. So do that. Go with it. Next, let's talk about the transit of the sun moving into Aries on March 19th. This is also the moment of the spring equinox when the sun moves on to the zero degree point of Aries. And it's also thought of as Astrology Day, International Astrology Day. That's because Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. And so when the sun gets to the zero degree point, it's almost like a New Year's Day astrologically. So this is a great time for setting new intentions, new goals, new plans. For you, Scorpio, this is falling in your sixth house. And the sixth house rules sort of your daily routines, the, day you, the way you live day to day. 
This is usually associated with work and also outside of work routines. And it also can have to do with health, and especially in terms of self-care and just sort of the way you move through your caring for yourself routine, sort of, the way you routinely care for yourself, I guess. So the sixth house is all about the way you sort of live and care for yourself day to day, both in and out of work. And you tend, Scorpio, to be very independent as a general rule in these areas. You do your own thing. You move at your own pace. You probably have a unique schedule in some kind of way for the daily tasks that you do at work. There's something sort of unique about them. I think you probably also would thrive if you are pretty independent during the day. Anyway, when the sun moves into this house, you almost get like a fresh start for that fiery independent energy of yours. There may be a new opportunity in some way, something that kind of just pops up and that fresh opportunity could really revitalize you in this area, usher in a new beginning. Just be careful not to be too impulsive. Aries can be a bit rash, so make sure to consider the decision. Don't just look without leaping because you're feeling excited or because it seems like a fun adventure. Make sure this is what you really want to do. But I wouldn't be surprised if something that involves the sort of way you live day to day gets sort of shaken up during this time if some sort of new opportunity or idea doesn't surface for you, some new habit. It's very interesting around this time of year with all this Pisces and Aries energy. There's so many endings and beginnings, but that's the springtime, I guess. Next, we get to the Libra full moon lunar eclipse that occurs on March 25th. This is definitely the most significant transit of the month. And the energies for this are really active two weeks before, two weeks after, really a month after, and even six months after. This whole sector of your chart, this entire axis, the 12th house, 6th house axis, is affected by these eclipses, Scorpio, by these eclipses. And this set of eclipses is sort of in the middle of the pack. These energies opened up in October, well, really even the spring before that, of 23, and there'll be more eclipses on this axis to come in the fall and then again in the spring after that. There are a lot of hits along this axis. So this is all about your daily routines and also your time alone and your spirituality. That's over in the 12th house. But like I said, the energy kind of pings back and forth. This whole axis is always involved in these eclipses, and this energy is really active throughout the year, not just right now. But around the time of this eclipse specifically, you're bringing in some releasing energy in the 12th house. So for you, Scorpio, this has to do with letting go of some old ways of doing things related to your spirituality or the way you spend time alone. There are some ways of doing things that don't work anymore and you're letting go of that. They're being eclipsed from you. And somehow that opens up what's to come in. In this house, in the 12th house, related to your spirituality and your time alone, and in the 6th house, connected to your daily routine and your health. And you know, the 6th house is mental health as well. I think Aries ruling here, your mental health is probably pretty strong. But I just want to mention that as well. It's also a part of of the sixth house. But yeah, now is an amazing time toward the end of March and early April to be letting go of old patterns that don't work for you related to your spirituality and the way you care for yourself. Realizing that some of the things maybe you did that you thought were helping others really aren't. Putting yourself first, caring for yourself where you need to in order to be there for other people as your best self. I could really see that being a part of this signature for you. It's interesting that spending time alone is a part of it and you had that rest energy sort of of open up when we talked about the new moon in Pisces two weeks before this. So as lively and exciting as the spring is, I hope you can kind of get some rest as well, Scorpio, around this time because I think it will serve you. And this story really just continues, Scorpio, as we get into April. The first major transit of the month happens right at the beginning on April 1st. Mercury stations retrograde in Aries. Usually Mercury moves through a sign in just a few weeks, but because of this retrograde, it's going to take a lot longer than that. Mercury will be here for more than two months. So when it comes to the way you live day to day, your daily routines, there is a lot of talking and thinking going on. You may be just having a lot of ideas. That could be the Mercury signature. You know, you could just be rethinking some of the plans that you've made in the past. Maybe some of the changes that you made in the past, maybe you did make them sort of rashly and now you're rethinking that. You could also be 
talking to people who might be able to help you. You could be getting some information, but these communications might be a bit strained or it might take time to really get all the information that you need. You might have to talk about these things more than once in order to have clarity or to clarify what you wanted to say. Again, just want to warn against being sort of too quick. We don't want to act too impulsively with Aries. And Mercury and Aries can definitely speak sort of spontaneously, which can be a dangerous thing to do, right? Because then you end up having to discuss it again and say, oh, I didn't really mean that and go back over what you said, clarify. There's definitely an edge to this signature that looks like that. Next, on April 8th, there's a new moon solar eclipse in Aries. So again, this is hitting for you and your 12th and your 6th house axis. And this is all about the newness coming in in the 6th house. So you've done all that releasing in the 12th of the ways of doing things that weren't working for you anymore. And now something new comes in when it comes to your 6th house. New daily routines, new way of caring for yourself health-wise, a new fresh independence, courage to move forward. I definitely feel like there's something sort of brave and courageous and enthusiastic about this. But also just remembering that this story is continuing to unfold. This is going on throughout 2024. But this is a very significant eclipse. So really pay attention, Scorpio, to what happens for you around this time. And think to about how that might connect to what was happening last fall in October. And you'll start to get a sense for what this theme is, is really all about for you, what this eclipse cycle is about, and that'll help you know what to expect as it continues to unfold. Finally, we get to the most important transit of this whole time period, all of March and April. I'm talking about the Jupiter conjunct Uranus that occurs on April 20th. And for you, Scorpio, this is happening in your seventh house. In many ways, everything that I've been talking with you about throughout this report has really been building to this because all of these planets, all of these personal planets have been making connections to Jupiter and Uranus as they've been building towards this connection. And so a lot of the things that you've been dealing with over the last few months, good or bad, they've sort of been setting this up. I love this for you, Scorpio, in your seventh house. How wonderful. Your seventh house rules your closest relationships, your closest partnerships. It could certainly be romantic relationships like with a spouse or a business partner or anyone you really share your life with. And a Jupiter-Uranus conjunction is quite rare. It only occurs every 14 or 15 years. And it's really an expansive opportunity. It could involve an unexpected change of some kind. That's that Uranus energy. It's something coming in quickly and a, a change and something that surprises you, but it's a shift. It's a growth. It's an advancement. It's sort of an abundance opportunity. So I think for you, Scorpio, this is amazing for your romantic relationships, your one-to-one -one relationships, your partnerships. And that energy has been unfolding when we began back in Pisces in your fifth house. Story through these three houses has really been building to this. So positive change when it comes to those most close personal relationships. One thing that's interesting is that you have this house as Taurus ruled. And sometimes even when we have a positive change, Taurus just is so averse to change that even when that change is positive, sometimes it can be a little hard in our Taurus house. You know, whenever something has been stable the same way for so long, it's a little jarring when it switches. So if you find yourself a little jarred by a positive change in your relationship around the end of April, maybe you can remember this and, and remember that that's right on time and this is good for you. Thank you so much for your time, Scorpio. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to. And also you can book a one-to-one -one consultation with me through my website at astrologywithgina.com if you'd like. And just thank you so much for watching. Have a great time, Scorpio.